I would like to kind of um, work with you on just getting this even more free and even more fluid and more comfortable up there in that fourth octave. Okay, so the first thing I see is um, when you go on your B flat major here. When you make that last shift up to whatever position that is, up to your uh, high B or your low B flat in the upper octave, um, I see you pulling down on the violin a little bit. Okay. And I would like to actually see the opposite. So I would like to see you come underneath the violin and support even more with the left hand as you go up. So. So just, and just, even if you just practice that little lift. Before you, so before you shift. Lift the scroll. And then it's almost as if your um, your finger can then slide downhill as you shift, okay? Try that and see if that helps. Yeah, really take, yeah, slow down and really take the time to just Hold the note before the shift. So we go. So we're here, right? We're here on your F, okay? Third finger F. Just hold that as long as you need to. Take the, take the time to lift the scroll and then slide down. Okay. Right? Now up, up, more, more. So really, <laughs> right. And so, and what, what I don't want to see you do there is lift by doing this, okay? So we want to, so get your head out of the way and lift with your arm, okay? And make sure you're not really engaging with your jaw there because that's going to be in your way when you try to lift. If you're clenching with your jaw, that's not going to work so well. So, and and when you're supporting with your left hand, you don't need your head so much. Okay, it's actually very freeing in the neck. So, so here we go. So we go up, and then as you bring the violin back down, let your jaw just catch the chin rest as much as it needs to to, to for you to maintain stability. Okay, so try it again. Yeah. That's better. Good. Now let's talk about what happens um, when we just practice that top octave. So you remember last time we were doing like, we were just doing the top octave. And so on, right? We were going through our flesh progression um, just in that top octave, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, or four, three, two, one. And so when you do that, we kind of do this pivoting action where we start with the thumb kind of anchored. And then as we go, we pivot on the first finger, we pivot on the second finger, pivot on the third finger. Right, and so the whole arm does this pivoting action as we come up. All right. right. Now we're we're lucky because we have big hands. Actually, in this in, in, in this situation, our big hands are are an asset. People with small hands really have to come around the rib of the instrument even more. Um, but when you when you do this. Another thing that one, let me just tell you one more thing that happens. So as you pivot, the heel of your hand, which will be 
in or the base of your thumb, if you will, is going to be in contact with the rib of the instrument there. But, and you can make this, again, you can make this work by without doing so much of a pivot. But you may feel a little bit stuck here. You may feel like you're running into a bit of a wall with the heel of your hand, the base of your thumb there. All right, so what you can do is as you pivot, the heel of your hand will come up and over the purfling of the uh, of the um, belly of the instrument here, okay? All right, so, and that keeps you from running into the side of the instrument as you go toward that fourth finger, all right? Give that a shot. So let's just do, let's go through our progression or maybe let's just take the first one. Let's take that minor arpeggio and let's just go up and down. Yep. Yeah. And good. Make sure you're supporting up. Yeah. And you can even, good. Yeah, that's looking really good. That's another thing is that you can kind of just rehearse this real quick, just to make sure you have good stability, just holding the violin with your thumb and the heel of your hand um, without your head. So, and, and that works best if the violin is a little bit above parallel because that throws the weight of the violin toward you rather than it sloping away from you and you feel like you're gonna lose it, okay? So a little bit above parallel and holding only with your, with the uh, the thumb and the base of your, of the base of your thumb. Yeah, yeah, good. And you can kind of move it around a little bit just to make sure you have freedom. Yeah, up and down, side to side, good. Yeah. Now let's go back to doing that again. So just your minor uh, arpeggio with the pivoting and exaggerate that motion and exaggerate the. Uh, the coming up and over with the base of the hand. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, that seems to be working really well. How's that feeling? Um, it feels pretty good. Um, feels much more stable. Mm -hmm. Good. So, Alright. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, and you want to want to do little bits of that. Um, you know, take the time to shake out your hand in between repetitions. That's good. So yeah, and one one more thing when you go when you come up and over, and you're only um, holding the instrument with your thumb there. Basically, you just have your fingertips. You have all four fingers here because your fingers are staying down. So on the way up, we just drop the fingers. And on the way down, we lift them, right? So we got our thumb and just our four fingers here. Um, and so we want as much surface area of, of that thumb in contact with the rib of the instrument so that it can, so that you have the maximum amount of stability there and you're catching that little overhang of the belly of the instrument with your thumb. Okay. Yeah. Good, 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 good. So let's incorporate that now back into the, into the whole arpeggio and just go through the whole progression. All right. Go ahead.